Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Betsy Bohan and today I want to talk about ungodly governance, what it creates and what are our responsibilities as believers in Christ. Ungodly governance, what is it? Here are some of the verses that I found in the scriptures regarding ungodly governance. Isaiah 123 your rulers are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases after rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does the widow's plea come before them. Ezekiel 22:27. Her princes within her are like wolves tearing the prey by shedding blood and destroying lives in order to get dishonest gain. Micah 7 3 concerning evil both hands do it well the prince asks also the judge for a bribe and a great man speaks the desire of his soul so they weave it together these are just some of the verses in the Bible Proverbs is full of God's commands and his aberrance towards ungodly governance. When you have ungodly governance in a nation, you can see it in a variety of ways. And it is reflected in that nation and in the condition of its people, no matter what type of ungodly governance it is. Ungodly governance has been around since the beginning of the known existence of man. So, Cain knew that he offered something that was not what God intended and yet he became angry enough to kill his brother who did offer the right sacrifice to God. And so this has been going on in the world since then. Conspiracy has been around forever. The devil conspired to go against God. The devil conspired against Adam and Eve. Cain conspired against Abel. And through all the kingdoms and ruling classes, all the way through history, you there were even many kings. And Rome, and Rome itself, Nero, killed many people, even in his own family. That wasn't uncommon because they didn't want anybody trying to kill them for the throne. This is ungodly governance. And unfortunately, it will be with us until Jesus comes to restore and to place and set up his kingdom, which is a kingdom of holiness, a kingdom based on love and based on what the justice and mercies of God. The God of Exodus 3, 14 and 15, the I am of the Bible. I am who I am and I will be what I will be and that is a name I will be known for all generations. Typically yes. you can look and see that there will always be a difference between those who rule and the lesser, right? And the treatment of children. Blood is on the ground in any of these nations that mistreat the children, the infants, the wives, the widows, anybody. And it cries up to God. So when you have an ungodly nation, you have rulers that take bribes, you have government officials and government and kings and presidents and rulers and dictators that enact things that are evil. I want you to know that even those who may make a cry out against certain evils of today, these rulers can also still be very wicked in other areas, even though they may not embrace some of the um, wicked things that go on in the cultures of other countries, but they embrace their own type of wickedness in their country. So what is the hope? What can we do as believers when we are in a nation that has 
ungodly governance. So what can we do as believers? First, the Bible does command us to pray for those in authority. And I don't think that we spend enough time praying for those in authority because I feel like um, that's kind of how we got to this place how many of us pray on a regular basis or fast and pray to break the bonds of wickedness to undo the bands of the yoke that every enslaving yoke be broken off like in Isaiah 58 for our country another thing is we need to not be afraid that if God tells us and his word says one thing and they say another to do what God says we're not going to be forced to sin against what God says. When we have conflict between the government and what God says, we do what God says and trust him with the consequences. He will always be with us. And here's the thing, people. As Christians, we need to know that they suffered in the past. Jesus said, if I suffered, you will suffer. Many gave their lives for the faith. And we need to be willing that Whatever the consequences are, we need to follow Jesus all the way to heaven, all the way to eternity. There are many who lived out good long lives and were examples in their communities. So what we have to do as believers, number one, pray for our rulers. Number two, we need to know and be diligent in living out our life for God. Number three, we need to show up. We need to be in the marketplace. We need to be at the city gates, meaning the places of prominence for our cities, our state, our nation. We need to have those who will be there. We don't just hand over our country, our cities to the devil just because uh, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That does not what that means. Jesus said, be in the world, but not of it. We are supposed to be having an influence. We are supposed to be standing up for godly governance. We should be, as Christians, being involved where God puts us, and at the very least, knowing who's on the ballot and showing up to vote. And then holding our cities, states, and nations accountable for voting practices that are truthful, honest, and straightforward, and not having all this other stuff go on that has been going on that brings results that are less than what the people voted for. So that's all I have to say for today. Of course there's so much more you can go into but that I just wanted to bring that to today especially since we are now beginning into the process of our election for our next president. Here's all right. Well feel free to put your comments below. Please like, share, and if you really find value in these, would you please subscribe? And I thank you, and until my next video, 